All right, everybody, welcome back to the Real Estate of Mind show. We're your host, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Hello, everybody. Where we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. We have a very special guest on today because, you know, as you know, we're called the Real Estate of Mind show, and we believe strongly that you can't be successful as a real estate investor or an entrepreneur if you don't have your mindset right. We always say you have to have this right to get everything else right. So our guest today is Tracy Litt from the Lit Factor. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you, thank you. I'm pumped to be here. Yeah, glad to have you. And I, <laughs> I'm looking forward to hearing more about what you do. And you really, um, you're a mindset coach for women uh, entrepreneurs, right? Mindset yes. coach. And yes. I guess that's, that's a lot of our students are women, actually. They are. And, you know, I'm so excited to have you here specifically, being that we do have so many female students, because construction and flipping houses and real estate um, has always been kind of a male dominated industry. And, I'm seeing so many more women get involved in it that it's super exciting to me. So I'm really excited to to have you talk to our women audience, yeah. our female audience. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited too. I, you know, it's interesting. My daughter recently mentioned she's getting ready to decide what she's going to do for college. And she brought up Chip and Joanna Gaines. Right. Yeah, and the awesome. flipping and right. And all of that. And it's just like, now I, I, I agree with you. And I love that uh, women are seeing beyond the limitation of some of the things that we were told we were capable of, right? And it's, yes, it's men and women, um, but I choose to work with women because I'm a woman and I have three daughters and it's just, yeah. you know, You're that's what I do. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> but that is important. You have three daughters, so you want to set mm -hmm. that example and you want to empower them and not have them have those, you know, like you said, self-limiting beliefs and limitations. Yeah. That, you know, it's a man's world. You know, women... <laughs> I think I said this in another podcast and you laughed, but I, I always tell my girls, you can do anything that a boy can do, except for maybe write your name in the snow with your pee. And even that you could probably do with a funnel. <laughs> you know? That's right. That's right. That's right. You get, it's all good. It's all good. If you get really creative, right. You can right. actually do that. <laughs> You're crazy. So tell us about Tracy. Tell us about you. and kind of what you in Florida. You're in sunny Florida. We're in I am. We're migrating down your way for sure. But you're in the, whereabouts are you in Florida? I'm in Palm Beach, Southeast Florida. Oh, Beautiful. that sounds so nice. What's the temperature? It's a little hot today, right? It's hot, but it's so gorgeous. And I'm happen to be looking out. I'm actually doing a little staycation while I hang out with you guys. So I do like solo retreats for myself, which I highly advise. And everyone who's listening, take the time, go away by yourself, create some space. It's critically important to the big dreams that you have. Um, so right now I'm looking out the slider to the ocean and it's just oh, glorious. Kidding. Right. I'm just gonna yeah. rub it in. I'm gonna rub it in. Yeah. We've been looking at houses down there on the ocean, ironically. So as you're looking at the real ocean, I'm looking at pictures of it. But uh, that's good. So you're down there yeah. in Florida. So tell tell us about you. Tell us what you do for women and kind of how you reach them. And we'll just keep yes, going. awesome, awesome. So I get to uh, wake up every day and remind women what they're capable of, and really explain. The beautiful platitudes that we all hear, like change your thoughts, change your life, and mindset is everything, and growth mindset, and I get to come in and explain how to practically apply that, how to use your mind like the tool that it is, so that you can up-level and start to actualize all the things you desire, right? To shift out of your current reality that you're constantly waking up, feeling the same feelings, thinking the same thoughts, running through the same behaviors and actions, and how to move yourself out of that. And that takes deep mindset work and new belief in yourself and conviction in what you're here to do and the decision to not be available for anything less than getting there. And that's what I get to do all day. That's great. I, I love that you do the change your thoughts, change your life, because we are also big believers in that your thoughts create your feelings, not the other way around. You know, most people mm -hmm. live on their feelings and it, it, you, you can't challenge feelings. They're not right or wrong, but you can challenge your thoughts. But the other important thing I think that you mentioned there was that not only do you tell them those words, but you actually help arm them with the tools that they need to make those changes, you know, and the exercise, yeah. the challenges to help get from because we're not all born with those we're not all born with the tools that we need mm -hmm. the, no i i the outside I, pressures a thousand percent and it's not not only are we not born with it we're not taught it at right. all you know we're we're so geared in society to run through like an order of operations that prep us for only one kind of future and it's not 
uh, entrepreneurial and it's not creative necessarily, you know, and really the biggest thing we can do for ourselves and future generations is start to use our minds like a tool because that's what it is, right? And start to understand what it means to become conscious of how you think and how you actually change the way you think and it changes everything. It changes how you see the world. It changes how you experience things. It changes how you feel and you can really move into the unfamiliar, which is where we need to be to have anything different, right? Because anything familiar means it's already in your reality, mm -hmm. right? Can we agree on that? Sure. And if you're hanging out with me or you guys or us, it's because you want more or different, right? which means you are going to have to step into the unfamiliar. Right. Right. And that's when it gets tricky. And yeah. that's when that's when fear strikes and that's where if you aren't understanding how to execute mindset work, you will screw yourself over time right. and time again. I'm sure you've heard it said, you know, that you're everything we want in life is inside our comfort zone, everything we want is outside our comfort zone, you know, so it gets scary to step out there and do that. Why mm -hmm. do you think so many people don't don't go down the path that People like us go down, you know, because it's, I mean, it's not easy. No, so I'm no. Curious what your thoughts are, you, you know, you do this for a living. What do you, what do you think holds people back? And what do you think, why do you think people just don't do it? If, if we know it can take us to a better place, why? Why don't we do it? I think it's a couple of things. The first one being fear and a gross misunderstanding of what fear is. People see fear as a stop sign. I see it as a green light. Yeah. Right. It's really understanding the distinction between fear and danger and realizing that your mind is here to help you survive. It's not here to make sure you thrive. It doesn't care. Once you wake up in the morning and you take your first breath, your mind is like, sweet, she's winning. Yeah. <laughs> right. You've lived to see another day. And yeah. that's just not enough for someone who's in touch with their dreams and their desires. Yeah. I think the second piece is um, a lack of worth which is a big part of my work as well. Just this feeling like you're not enough for that or you don't deserve to have it all. You don't, it doesn't feel safe to, you know, have more than the generations before you have had. So there's a lot of worth work, you know, at the, at the core, I think of all the things that stop us, it's always a combination of fear and worth. Do you think there's a, there's a I might get slapped for saying this, but you think there's a distinction yeah. between men and women, the way they think about that, the worth uh, piece? Uh, a, 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 thousand percent it's not even a a doubt in my mind i know it for sure you know when i have a group of women that i'm doing something with i will oftentimes say like when we're talking about playing a bigger game right going out there using your voice saying what you think allowing yourself to be supported right if i was speaking to a group of dudes and i started talking about it you'd be off the screen executing already right yeah. right <laughs> it's just it's just it's the difference in and in, in you know we were raised in a very patriarchal lens, yep. right? I mean, we, we, we have to recognize that for women specifically, I call it in my book, I have a book called Worthy Human, and in the book, I call it the drip process, what your great-grandmother dripped on your, your great-great-grandmother drips on your great-grandmother who drips on your grandmother who drips it on your mom who drips it on you, that those belief systems and those worldviews are still in us as women, whereas men were not um, influenced that way. And it's not one's better or worse because conversely, men were in influenced to be strong, hold back your feelings, don't cry, right? Vulnerability is weakness, which I equally have a passion to, to right size as well. Right. Do you find that I, I noticed with our students um, that age plays a difference, too? And, you know, there's a lot of dynamics that obviously do how you were raised and, you know, like, but I'm, I'm 46. I was raised in a super religious household. You know, the man was the head of the house. And it's like I, I almost had to get to a point where I had to give myself permission to step out of that and, and feel more empowered. And, you know, Glenn certainly helped me do that, too. But. I noticed that women my age or older may have more of a tendency to have those kind of feelings, but the younger generation seems to be more empowered that don't have the those self-limiting beliefs. You know, there's always anomalies and, and people that are have that drip process, but it seems mm -hmm. like the younger generation doesn't struggle with that as much as my generation does. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. And to, and also to your point, you know, we're speaking in, in general terms, and there's always tons of exceptions to every part of the conversation. Um, but you know, it's just different. Our, we 
you know, in speaking before we got, got on, we have kids, we have teenagers, we have young adults. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just different. The world they were brought up in the tech, the accessibility of everything. They all have this more, I'm already awesome kind of attitude, this more like, kind of like, uh, entitled type of thing where right. our generation, cause you and I are in the same age range, you know, we we don't that i think what you said is so profound giving yourself permission yeah. to be who you are capable of being to say what you want to say to show up to lead to go into flipping homes or real estate you know and having a seat at the table yeah is that, extremely that's not powerful. An easy thing to do either because even when you say you know i'm going to give myself permission to do this it's like you still have all those like doubts and you know that 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 voice in your head that's saying yes. you're not supposed to be doing this or it's wrong or you know you need to be submissive or whatever whatever that voice is for any ind particular individual yes submissive <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, I can't. I'm going to say it twice. The first time I said, she didn't say that, right? But to that, to that point, that's the that's no. the kind of household I grew up in. You know, the uh, yes. wife submissive to the husband and, you know, whatever. And that's the one thing that, you know, with Glenn and I, thank goodness we have more of a partnership type of relationship than, and that's what we're teaching our kids. Yeah. Right. Uh, absolutely. And, um, what were you just what you were just describing in, and then the mind and all the thoughts and all the doubts, that's exactly why my work is here, right? And I will tell you that my work works 100% of the time when you work it. So in that moment, right, you give yourself permission, that's just step one. It's like someone that's, you, you make the decision to do something and you're like, yes! And then all of the fear starts to flood in. And then all of the doubt starts to arrive. So the thoughts you were describing, I talk about that. That's your fear talk track. Mm -hmm. Who am I to do this? I don't think I can. What if I suck? What if it's too big of a risk? What if nobody likes me? What if I don't succeed? Blah, 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 blah. And if you listen to your thoughts, you will screw yourself over, <laughs> right? When it, the, the thoughts, your, our thoughts aren't the problem. Believing them right. is the problem, right? Mm. Right. Yeah, and yes. you know, and and we're gonna think sixty to seventy thousand thoughts a day, whether you like it or not. Your eyes blink, your heart beats, and your mind produces thoughts. That's the jam. That's right. what it does. It is incumbent upon you as the being that has the mind to be so aware of what you think that you go, hold on. Well, that thought makes me feel is disempowered. That, that right. thought makes me not take action. I'm going to stop that and I'm going to become a deliberate thinker instead. One of the tricks I like to use when I'm having those kind of challenging thoughts is to actually ask myself, is that true? Mm -hmm. Just ask yourself that, you know, that statement, is that true? And because thoughts can be challenged, they can be right or wrong. They can be yes or no, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. your feelings aren't, but your thoughts mm -hmm. can definitely be challenged. So if you ask yourself, is it true? Or is that just a story I'm telling myself to protect myself? Or like yes. you reported it earlier, is it fear or danger, you know? Yes, love yes. I, I love this one. I actually wrote it down. I like this. So my, my work works 100% of the time when you work it. Love mm -hmm. that. That's a that's an important piece of what we talk about all the time. So in our in our workshops and everything we train, we always tell people what we do is hard. Like we're not a get rich quick scheme. We're not. We it's work. But I say yeah. what we do is work, but it's worth it. So I, I constantly am preaching that you have to work, work, work. But yeah. where we're different that you don't know about is that in our workshops, I spend the like on we it's a three day workshop we do, and on Friday morning for the first two hours, it's all mindset. And I always say, let me let me. I say you're not expecting this today, but let me just describe to you why we're doing it. So I say, what's the most important part of a house? And everyone finally gets around to saying, well, the foundation. I say, what's the most important part of your business? Well, finally get around to saying, well, me. So I said, so if you're not right, you're going to crumble. Your foundation is going to crumble. So we have to work on you. So I, when I explain it that way, the whole room usually goes, okay, that makes sense. Then I get them to buy into the fact that that's important. And I get to go on a journey. Like a lot of things you just said, and I'm going to steal some of your lines if you don't mind, but Please. I, like, I, like, I like some of the stuff, the way that you word them. <laughs> I like that you said that your your beliefs aren't the problem, or I'm sorry, your thoughts aren't the problem. It's what you, it's really the ones you believe that can be the yeah. problem, right? Yeah. So the ones you believe, they either make you or break you, yes. right? And I yes. wonder why, I was wondering what your thoughts are from your experience, why so many people don't work it, right? They come to a workshop, they come to a seminar, they read a book, they get jacked up. And, and I've, you know, I was not brought up in a house that talked about our thoughts and that kind of stuff. You know, I, I'm 51 and I just, you know, I should have said I was 41. I could have made you the sugar bottle. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one believed me on that one, no. 
they have hard enough time believing you're 46. So, um, but you know, it's been a journey. As I look back over my mental journey, it started back around 20 years old with an Anthony Robbins, you know, buying the personal power, right? Blah, yes. We've done that, you know, so, and then starting up the journey, he's probably your neighbor down there, right? He lives near. Yeah, near down you. the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, so I'm, I think about the journeys I've gone through and I've had to push through times when it's really sucked. And I wonder why you think people from your experience, why do people either get started and stop or never get started at all, get excited about something and then they realize it's work and then don't, I wonder what your thoughts are. Okay. You know, like, yeah, fear is always the big one, right? That fear stops them, but, but fear, fear, but you know what? I think it is two things. It's a lack of belief that it's possible. Yep. Right. For you, you, it's like you get excited at first and then because you don't really understand how to human better and how to work this thing, your mind and your body and your nervous system must be led by you. Okay because this is the real answer to your question. We underestimate the art of change and what it's gonna take to embrace the discomfort and how to create safety in your own system because change happens at the speed of safety, okay? So you go into a seminar and you're jazzed and you're ready to rock and you have that inspiration and you're in the room and you're in the energy of it, right? So you have all the support and then you don't execute when you get home or you stop doing the program it's because all of a sudden you started to become different. You started to move outside into that space of unfamiliar that we talked about earlier. And as soon as you start to move towards the unknown or think about moving towards the unknown, your mind and body start to work together to shut you down and keep you the same. Mm. The same as because, correct because your mind and body are not interested in you being prosperous or wealthy or successful or any of the things that you really desire. So I think what happens is and to what you said before, Glenn, which was, you know, when you first, what's the most important part of the house, the foundation, what's the most important part of, you know, your business, you, that's why I do what I do and why women come to me because you can have all the strategy in the world, but if you're not going to step up and execute, it's all worthless to you. Right. I just had a brain, a brainstorm as you were, as you were saying that, or I had an epiphany. I I'm thinking to myself, I, lo I love that. I'm going to steal that line too. Change, change happens at the speed of safety, right? That's a great line. So ch change happens at the speed of safety for someone like me and my personality I'm never overly comfortable. I have to be growing. Like, so my comfort zone is almost out of, is growth, right? So I'm yes. okay being out there because that's how I, and probably you too, right? So I, I always yes. want to be seen better, whether it's myself personally or in our marriage or as a father or as a business owner or as a leader or as a mentor, or as a brother, whatever. I always want to be better. So I'm always searching for that thing. So I'm willing to be outside my comfort zone. So I almost feel safer, if that makes sense. When you're I, growing. I almost feel safer when I'm growing than when I'm not growing. Now, I don't love the initial fear and all that kind of stuff, but I've gotten used to it over time. Yeah. So here's really what that is, which is such a killer conversation. You have learned to make discomfort familiar. Discomfort familiar. Oh, that's like that one too. Okay. That's what you're doing. I'm so here, here, you all day today. So that's all good. Right, we'll just steal it, take it. We'll hang out for the rest of our lives. So <laughs> here, so here's like when I was saying the crux of the art of change is making the familiar unfamiliar, right? And making the unfamiliar familiar. So for you, Glenn, what you've done to your system unknowingly is discomfort lives in your comfort zone. It's yeah. so familiar for you to feel uncomfortable, you know, to have those up-leveling moments, to be cool with uncertainty, which is critically important when you're expanding. Like there's no, if you're someone who uh, likes to think you're a control freak, you're going to have to learn how to let that go fast, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. As you're expanding. So that's familiar for you. So it's easy to process. Right. Most people um, experience the beginning stages of discomfort and unfamiliarity and they go, oh, no, 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 uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. And they zhuzh, zhuzh is a word I use a lot. They zhuzh themselves back. <laughs> they, ret they retreat back right? And here's what happens. So they were going, they're going, oh, discomfort. Oh my God. No, it's not supposed to physically be painful. It's not supposed to be. Ah. And they run back and then here's what happens. Their mind and body goes, yes, mm -hmm. winning. 
and their life and their dreams lose uh -huh. because yeah. there is no gray. Your mind wins and you lose or vice versa. Yeah. And that's where your personal power is everything. That's where you realizing, whoa, I'm the being that has a mind and has a nervous system. And I need to stop letting that lead. I need to step up and lead. Yeah. Before we go on, I want to keep telling this is an awesome conversation. Tell everybody how they can find you. I want to make sure they always know throughout this how they can find you. So tell yes. me how they can find you. Thank you. The thank you. The lit factor, lit with two T's, L I T T. It's actually my last name. I thank my dad all the time for such a kick ass <laughs> last name. Awesome. Right. So it's the litfactor.com and it's the lit factor on all social media channels too. Awesome. So yeah. you just brought up a point though, like, like and I, I talk to people, our students in particular, about this. Control is an illusion. You know, we can try to control everything around us. And, you know, if that makes us think we feel better, but it really doesn't. Mm -hmm. Control yep. is such an illusion. The only thing we truly have control over is our thoughts. Mm -hmm. and if you can, yes. If you can master the art of controlling your thoughts, you can master your life. A thousand percent. And I will take that one step up a notch. Uh, to alleviate or eliminate the word control in its entirety because because I'm a recovering control freak like <laughs> I did a lot of work when I first started this work I focused on control and judgment those were two of my most pervasive <laughs> tendencies and now it's like awesome uh, I will tell you this because you guys will appreciate this I'm <laughs> such a control I used to be such a control freak that my now husband when we were dating um, I was having a party and I was hand at um, hand addressing the envelopes to like a hundred different people and he came over very sweetly you know the boyfriend girlfriend stage like hey can I help you address those envelopes and I looked at him and I said well here's a piece of paper can you write out an address real quick and he goes I'm sorry Legit, yeah. He goes, are you are you asking me for a writing sample right now? I was like, yeah, I am, I am. Like, you, what? Who does that? A quiz? A quiz? Right. Who does who does that? These these envelopes are going in the trash. Why did I care? I didn't care. It was my control freak that cared. Right? Ridiculous. So, so yeah. So so rather even than controlling our thoughts, I want you to all know you are at choice. Right, because anytime you use the word control, you'll, your body gets really tight yeah. and constricted, right? And it's like, no, 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 I have agency. I can choose the ones that help me and I can let go of the ones that don't help me. And when you think of it like that, it's just so easy. Yeah. There's a, there, oh, I'm sorry. That, that's great. And it's funny that you use that. That's how we, that's how we talk to our kids is, you know, this is a choice here. What choice are you going to make? And, you know, life is all about choices and you can choose to be happy or you can choose to be miserable right now. You know, what, what's going to make you feel better so <laughs> yeah. I like that yeah. even in the power of our own thoughts though. I'm thinking I was actually down in your neck of the woods 15 ish years ago, I went through a divorce and that's a horrible time to go through life. It's, you know, it's very tough. And so, but I had to go find some me. Right. And so I went down to around Fort Lauderdale around your neck of the woods. And I st spent four or five days down there alone. Didn't talk to anybody. And I read the book, Man's Search for Meaning. Yes. And, um, you've probably read that or know by Vic Victor Frankel, absolutely. Yeah. And so it, it's that book has always, always stuck with me. I remember reading that book and just realizing that no matter what happens in life, we have a choice. No matter what happens. And I, I want to ask you this question because I'm curious because right now we're living through times of incredible crisis, right? There's and uncertainty uncertainty mm -hmm. and there's health issues and political upheaval it's just it's it feels to me like we live in an insane crazy world that i don't even recognize anymore i think a lot yeah. of people feel that way and i wonder if you you're finding with people that you're working with that it's more difficult now because almost every path you turn down is uncertain even the mm -hmm. ones you thought were certain are suddenly not mm -hmm. certain and i wonder yeah. what you what your what your what your view is on that, on this crazy, on the crisis, and I'm not, I'm not looking at political stuff, just the, you know, right. we're all in this massive upheaval, no matter what side you're on. Yeah, absolutely. I love this. And um, my students and clients are thriving because I teach the superpower of uncertainty. Mm. I teach the paradigm of the more unknown and uncertain things are, the more possibility and opportunity there is. If it's known, you're experiencing it, right? If it's uncertain and it's unknown, then it's like, you can look at it one of two ways. Oh my God, I have no idea what's gonna happen next. Or, oh my God, I have no idea what's yeah. gonna happen next, yeah. right? And it's yeah. like, oh, I don't know what's gonna happen and I love it, 
right? And really being that and embodying that is everything because what's so fascinating to me, I observe the world as a case study, right? I mean, it's just who I am and the work that I do. I'm constantly observing and non-judgment and going, oh, that's so interesting. Oh, that's so interesting. Everything's always been uncertain, always. To your point earlier, there is no control. Um, and the reason why we struggle with uncertainty is because our mind hates it, mm. right? Our mind hates uncertainty and unknown. It's actually why Uber became so successful so fast. If you think about this, this is the best way I can explain this. Uber solved for the mind's hate of the unknown. So now you pick up your phone, you order your car, you can watch the car, you know exactly where it is, you know exactly when it's coming, you know if it's stopped, now you're soothed. Your whole system, that safety thing, it's soothed. It's like, I know where my car is, it's on its way, I know it's here, I know it's there. So now it, it alleviated that whole unknown piece, right? Which is what made it so wildfire successful because we as primal beings crave to know. So now the whole world is like running amok because what COVID did and then all the subsequent events of 2020, it just shined a light on, oh, it really is uncertain. We really don't have any control. And it becomes a mindset opportunity for you to shift how you see it. Yeah, I, I think that people think, I know that people think that people like you and people like us have always got our shit together. They think that we've always got it together, that we're always on our game, that we're always, and they think, oh, I mean, you're always positive. Now, we haven't discussed this before, but I know you're not perfect all the time because I know I'm not perfect all the time. I know Amber's, I mean, you're perfect all the time, but I am not. And so I want to know. Good answer, good answer. I think our listeners want to know, what do you do when you get in a funk and you get down? Because yes. I know you do. I don't even know you, but I know you do because I I know. I just, I, I'm, of course. I know. But people do yes. No, people think that you're always on your game. I guarantee you people think she's always got it together. And when you say, no, I struggle, they think, yeah, but not as bad as me. Everybody's got their own thing, but we've all got our place we go to in our heads that we go, Ugh! Mm, well, oh my God, I, I love I love you. I love you for saying this and bringing this up. So I have to say one thing before I actually answer you. Yeah. That um, isolation and the way we think, like you were just saying, oh, it's not, but it's for me, it's different. For me, it's different. That's called um, isolation thinking. And when you recognize you're doing that, that's one of the ways that you um, keep yourself down. That's one of the ways where you keep being mean to yourself. That's one of the ways where you really block your ability to access your greatness. Because if you keep thinking it's only you, it's only you, it's only you, then you're never going to really connect with common humanity. And like, uh, we're all going through the same shit on a different yeah, day. Holy okay. Holy like holy. there's so many, it doesn't matter. I have so gratefully been able to serve women all the way from India and Australia and the UK and Connecticut. Like it doesn't matter where you're from. There's only so many themes. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I call it head so, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, exactly. We're all experiencing uh, uh, the same thing on a different level of the spectrum. So for me, I feel my feelings when I'm in a funk. I don't yeah. try to bypass it. You know, if I if I feel my system doing something and you know I'm very aware that part of this work is really important that you're cultivating your consciousness and you're becoming super self-aware of your body when you feel tense, you know, you know the feeling right before you're like I kind of want to punch someone in the face right now like oh, yeah. something's got to give doing something for yourself whether it's sitting down and just holding the space for my feeling to process or screaming i teach really healthy screaming to let it rip and let it out of your system um to, and to not judge yourself in the moments where you're just like ha you're having a human experience this whole like superhuman robot perfect thing that flutters around is just such noise and such garbage. And when you can um, unconditionally accept yourself and don't go into a place of judgment when you're having a dip, it's going to pass so quickly. I like I like to tell people to ha um, set a time limit on it too because I think it, it's so good to work through those emotions. You don't want to suppress them and ignore them, and you know you do have to work through them. And I think that's super important. But yeah. the problem is that people get stuck in the emotion. Yeah, how do you not and, stay there? And, and, right. and so I, I, I sometimes I'll say, you know, depending on the severity of it, you know, if someone passed away, maybe you need to give yourself a little more time to sure. work through all of the emotions or whatever. But if it's just a funk, you know, give yourself yeah. five minutes to scream and get it all out. Give yourself, you know, two hours, whatever that time limit is for you, a day, whatever it is. But like once you process it, 
let yourself move past it. Give yourself permission to move past it. My daughter this morning, my seven-year-old, was having a, just a bloody meltdown. And I she lost her treat for the day. And um Which she, creates a whole new meltdown. It did. Oh and yeah. So it created a whole new meltdown. And she was just she was trying to talk me out of it. And so once I it goes back to that certainty, uncertainty thing. So yeah. once I said, I'm not changing my mind. This is how it is. You know, tell your brain the right story. Tell your brain, you know what? It's only a day and I can start over and then the next day I'll be fine. And like mm -hmm. once she had that certainty of, okay, mom's not changing her mind. Yeah. Like that, she was a different kid and everything was fine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think you have to give yourself like that time period to get past it. If you're somebody that tends to get stuck. So here's a question yeah. though. So Tracy, you were saying, so you feel your feelings. That's great. I want to know more specific. So you feel your feelings but how long do you stay in them, right? Because how do you know, because right, I think, I. so for me, it used to be I'd be in my feelings for, you know, months and then it'd be days and we, hopefully down, I'm down to, you know, hours or minutes, sometimes days, sometimes, you know, but, but how do you, Tracy, get through that? Who's, now you coach people, you're world famous, mm -hmm. which is awesome, but you have those moments. How long do you let yourself stay in them and how do mm -hmm. you get out of them? I think that would be mm -hmm. the most helpful for listeners to know what, what specifically you feel them, but then what? Like people say, you, so you feel it. So, so what? So how do you get mm -hmm. out of it? Right? Because mm -hmm. people are saying, right, I'm feeling it right now. I feel like shit. I'm like, get out yeah, of it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to answer the question directly, but then I have to say something about emotional addictions after. So don't let me forget. Okay. Um, when you feel your feelings, you release them. And then they no longer need to be felt. It's when you suppress and resist or try to bypass or ignore, that they become more pervasive and hang around longer. So if I'm feeling that kind of like, Ugh, like right now, right, we're in COVID, when I'm home, I have a family of five, my husband now works from home permanently. Like I went from hanging out alone all day, rocking and rolling to everybody staring at me all day. <laughs> why, do, why, why? Like, and they literally just stand around me. I'm like, why are you looking at me? Why, right? So the, that kind of feeling that comes up, I go, oh, okay. I know that if I hold on to this, because this is about awareness too, I can forecast the trajectory of my day. If I hold on to this, I know what my day is going to feel like, which means my week's going to feel like that, which then could mean my month is going to feel like that. And I'm not available for that. I have big work to do. And I'm not going to abdicate my power and give my energy away to something that I could simply allow myself to feel. So in that moment, how? I get up and I go and I scream. I have a way that I scream. I teach it to really let it out. Then that scream turns into crying. And then I stand there and I cry it out and I cry it out. Snot bubble, <gasps> dry, the whole thing, right? The whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> you, know? right, you just let it like go there with yourself, lay on the floor if you have to and cry it out because emotion is not bad. We've just been raised to judge it as bad. Emotion is simply energy leaving the body. Something's going on and it's got to come out. So once I felt the feeling, I don't have to go, well, how long do I want to sit here? Because it's gone, because it's processed out of my system completely. And then I can move on. I heard it said one time that crying, crying is like, crying is when your body gives up. Your body, you're just, I've had it, I've done, I'm at this moment. But, but to take the next step is when you're done, you have nowhere else to go crying. You're, you're right. When you, sometimes when you have a good cry, you, you know, Lost my dad a few years ago. You have moments of just massive letting it out, but over time it gets better. But you, when you, once you have that massive cry, whether it be through a, a hardship, divorce, a business loss, a whatever, you know what? What you said is very true. Like you, once you're through that, your my body says, "All right, well, now what?" Mm, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Go and, and so now I'm thinking, how can I? Right? How can I get out correct. of correct? Correct. And that's why emotions are meant to be felt. It's not like mysteriously your emotions just seep out of your feet while you're sleeping, when you're suppressing it and avoiding it and saying, oh, I feel some tears. Let me push it to the side and I'll deal with it later. Right. Or the pent up resentment because you haven't honored yourself in so long that you're mad at the world. There's so many different things that create it. Um, but ultimately, mastering and being willing to feel your feelings is a huge part of actualizing your vision, right? And, and really being able to um, have all the things that you say you want. Here's the thing I wanted to mention about emotional addiction that's important for those people that are like, but I just feel guilty all the time, or I just feel frustrated all the time, or I constantly feel angry, or I feel pressure. 
then you want to take a look at that because I would qualify that as an emotional addiction, meaning you are continuously feeling that way, even though it has negative uh, consequences in your life. And if that's the case, then we have a deeper healing conversation to have because what we need to do is allow you to release that, but also start to condition your body into a different emotion, right? So let's say- Right, okay, keep going. Yeah. So, yeah, so let's say you're someone who like, pressure is like your jam, like pressure and overwhelm, like as, a, you know, as if someone's giving us a badge of honor for the busiest person in the world, right? What like this- what you, what you, what you <laughs> just, what Right, exactly, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? <laughs> what do you mean? Um, so if, you, if you're constantly living in like that pressure and overwhelm and that's that is the emotion of your life basically it's like how you operate it's how you've conditioned your body what we get to do is we get to say hold on so what do you want oh you want to live in ease right and like flow okay so we need to shift you from someone who is used to operating under pressure into someone who thrives in ease and flow and that's the process of releasing emotion and training your body what it feels like every single day to live in ease. Isn't that funny? That's uh, that's a those are. I feel like I should be on a couch paying you, you 135 you bucks. You find him. Yeah. <laughs> why are you gonna point at me? No, why is it always me? I know so you're perfect here on the call. <laughs> because perfect. you're keeping because you're keeping your marriage healthy. Smart man. Smart man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's how that works. That's great. That's that's really great advice. That's that's a great thing to think about is what you're addicted to because there are times even for me when I do I have that it's been it's been pressure for so many years as an I've been an entrepreneur since I was 19, right? So over 30 years I've worked for myself building businesses and and you know there's a lot of stress to that. And yeah. and you're when I don't feel it, I don't feel like I'm doing anything. Like I'm not sure that I'm I'm not sure that I'm winning. When I'm not feeling well, that pressure, but I, but I like it. When we go on, we go scuba diving. We love this. I told you we love the ocean, right? We were, our goal. We're going to live on the ocean. That's our, our right near or intercoast to whatever. We're going to be very close. And um, you know, I like when we go on vacation. I'm like, I I can check out really quickly on vacation. I've got to the point where I've taught myself that when I go someplace, I can go click. And I, even the weekends now, I'm really great about our backyards, like a like a beach park. We have a beach in our backyard in New York. We have a we have a pool, beautiful whatever. Well, I get, I get home at night. I'm pretty good about just clicking off. And I used to be, I worked all the time, but mm -hmm. I've gotten really good at that, but it took a long time. We, we know to someone. Let that go. Cause it's because of an addiction. I, I hadn't thought of it like an emotional addiction, but you're right. I think to myself, I gotta, I gotta be doing, I'm, I, I gotta feel pressure. If I don't feel pressure, something's wrong. Right. So, so some, right. So somewhere actually somewhere in your belief system, you believe that the more pressure you feel, the more successful you are. Absolutely. I, I yes, I've come to that realization. But I much more prefer how I feel when I'm calm. Correct. So what? So what if I told you? What if I told you there was a world where you could be more successful and more productive from a place of calm and ease? Yeah, sign me up. That's where I, that's yep. the world I want to be in. Right. Yeah. We, we yeah. have someone. We have someone very close to us in our lives that her house is crazy and she loves it. Like like she doesn't seem like she loves it, but her house she wouldn't be able to function if it wasn't crazy. If there weren't a bunch of animals and clocks going off and phones ringing and just going. Yeah. She wouldn't be able to survive in not a crazy atmosphere. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, and then I would, I'm curious, like in that person specifically, does she enjoy it? Or is it just so familiar to her that she's justifying the enjoyment of it? But yeah. really it's not what she wants. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. very interesting. I, I think that you, I can see where you help a lot of people be able to see through things at a different level. This has been a great conversation today because I, you know, one of the things that people that work with us, people, we, we have our workshops and we choose people to work with us long term. The people long term, they get a couple different coaches. They get a, this is why we're really different as a real estate company is because we help people with their, you know, we believe it's 20% mechanics and 80% mindset, if not more yeah. mindset. Totally. So we believe that very strongly. And so, when people work with us, they get a real estate investing coach and they get a peak performance coach. Matter of fact, they're Anthony Robbins trained coaches that work for us. And that's what they work awesome. and they get that. So we alternate coaching weeks. So it's, you know, it's a, it's real estate. It's, and some people, I don't even know if they do the real estate, but they just follow up <laughs> the coaching part, you know, they're like, wow. And so I think we see a lot more success in our students because we spend more time on the mindset. And once people buy into the concept that, yeah, if I can get my mind right, I can be more successful. Cause as you know, all of us get to a point where we start to learn 
that's why we're on this journey. I think we're on the same path together. We're all trying to be better people and that kind of stuff. When you learn that, you realize I can be more successful and have more things in life if I can just get my mind right. So I better work on that. Right. You can make well, because money you, you want, but you're going to lose it if you don't have your mind right. You're going to lose it. A thousand, a thousand percent, and you can never outperform the way you think. No. Ooh, right. So that's what. Right. I, that's I what mindset. You have to use <laughs> I, I'm loving that all these are coming yeah. from a woman too. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. so good. Um, so, but that's really at its core. That's what mindset is. If you take the word mindset and you divide it out, right? It's whatever your mind is set to on whatever specific area of your life or topic, just like the governor in your car. If the governor in your car on the speed, uh, you know, the speedometer is set to 120, but it says your car can go to 170, you're never getting that car to 170 because the governor set at 120. Yeah. Even though the capacity of the vehicle is 50 miles per hour um, faster, right? It's the same thing. So whatever your mind is set to. So when you think about money, if you resent rich people and you feel like money's hard to make, well, then so it is. Yeah. Because you won't be able to outperform what you think. Self-limiting belief. That's really that's powerful. I think that's probably a great spot to end. Yeah. yeah. Well, 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 we've got more questions. Go ahead. No, I, I just wanted to ask her. We, we could be here all day for I sure. Know. So I know. Yeah. But but as we're wrapping up, what's the mm. best piece of advice you have for a woman, a female entrepreneur? Or a man. No, this is women. It's, it's, women. Listen, yeah, listen, women it's fine. It's fine. You, you know, you we guys can totally jump. You could jump on our train. It's okay. Yes, all you. humans we are welcome. Qualities anyway. <laughs> I don't know what um, that means. In today's right. world, it's very confusing, so don't say that to people. I, I think you take it as a compliment. You take I'm it as a compliment. Man. Let's be clear about that, okay? I'm proud of that. He's I'm, good. Man. He's I'm, man. I'm good with that, okay? I'm not confused. <laughs> but All right, it's so but is the girl in the relationship. Uh, I, I get that. I, I wish my... Emotions in the other, that's all. That's all that it I is. Lo I love this. I wish my husband was here because we also try to change the uh, that, that dynamic too. Um, <laughs> so really, what's the most important thing I can say to any woman, entrepreneur, or man who's jumping on our train? <laughs> is it starts with uh, your ability to cultivate calm and start to notice in your system. All this beautiful work and the conversation we've had is phenomenal and absolutely the way to get everything you want. It must start with you slowing down and creating some space and upgrading your ability to notice what's happening. That's it. So, and I, and I actually, if you go to feelthepowerofcalm.com, you can get, I do a whole free 30 minute video training on this. What does calm mean? What am I talking about? How do you build a flexible nervous system? How do you self-regulate? Because you can't really even do mindset work if you aren't able to slow down and connect with your body because your body becomes the indicator. So start with calm. Love it. That's, uh, that's awesome. Great yeah. advice. Tell everybody again how they can find you. Tell them how they can get to know you and find you and follow you. You have awesome, awesome advice. So tell everybody, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so go to feelthepowerofcom.com. You can grab that free training. And then the lit factor, L I T T dot com or social media, the lit factor everywhere Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, all the places. I'm going to follow you as soon as we get off of here. You are awesome. Yay. Thank Thanks you so much. This has been great. This today. was Thanks. super fun. You guys yeah. are amazing. I think our listeners are going to love it. So yep. this, this goes right along with what we do, what we teach every day. So it's good stuff. So, and I find out what an awesome husband I am. <laughs> he is so an awesome husband. You are. You're amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Chase, thanks for being with us today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave us a review. And leave us your questions and comments and we will personally answer. And please share it to anyone you think could benefit. You can find us all over social media at Glenn and Amber Swarm. We'll see you next week.